You go from like feeling super high and great and you're about to conquer the world to like very, very low. Oh my gosh, what's going on? You question your self-confidence, you question your self-worth in a way. Like you go through this sort of ups and downs and they're all sort of compressed in like one single feeling, you know? <laughs> Imagine that work could be something that makes people stronger. If we would have come in earlier, we would have opened it up yeah. to make that space particular nice. On the changing environment in the world, you know, like with these new technologies and stuff like that, like what will space contribute to, to people and like how will that, that space evolve, right? How should the workspace be designed? You can work everywhere now. So offices need to uh, improve to be attractive and to be able to exist. And I think in the end, as a business, you would still always want a place to meet up. The shared workspaces are perfect for, perfect for that. But then again, the workspace itself is a huge open space. Mm -hmm. I find those places for me to be less productive. Because when you start with the person inside, all of a sudden you realize very quickly, from the beginning, that lighting matters, that acoustics matters, that climate matters, that this matters, and aesthetic matters, and architecture matters, and you start to sort of peel back until you kind of put a building, or put a structure around this whole thing. I think actually the office has never been as lively as this time. It is so much improving and there's so much to win. How cool it would be if you go to an office and you are not worn out at the end of the day, but you are fully re-energized because you've been working. And if someone delivers on them, what would you care whether that person sits on an island on the moon or in, in, in the office, as long as that gets done? Workspaces and People Season 2, premiering next Sunday, here on YouTube.